Hello everyone and welcome to Small Screen Maniac. I'm your host, Constance Miller. Okay, it's time to talk some spoilers for X-Men 97 Episode 3, Fire Meat Flesh. If you haven't watched it yet, watch it, come back, watch this video because I'm going to spoil some stuff. And, or unless you don't care, you can just go ahead and continue to watch. There happens to be a lot to digest in this episode, even though it is horribly rushed, and it should have been at least a two-parter, just to cover all the ground. And I've seen it three times now, and for my review, I'm just going to take it for what it is. Um, it is disappointing to the source material. However, it is what it is. So let's dive in. At the end of episode two, we find out there's another Jean Grey and she has come to the X-Men in need of help. What the heck? So what's going on? Well, we find out that the Jean that we know has been a clone. For how long, we don't know. But it turns out the clone is being controlled by Mr. Sinister. And his influence over her is now at an all-time high because she has given birth to Cyclops' baby. Yes, Mr. Sinister now has the ultimate mutants. And his plans are to enhance him so he is practically perfect and invulnerable. So coming to the influence of Mr. Sinister, the clone of Jean Grey uh, becomes the Goblin Queen and she unleashes an inferno upon the mansion. And that wreaks a lot of havoc and some good action sequences for the series episode and and that was really awesome we got to see some really cool exchanges with bishop um some really dark elements actually um that were kind of horrifying i'm not gonna lie about that some of it kind of scared me a little bit and everybody uh, is affected by it and Especially Morph, obviously, because he knows who's behind it all, as he's been manipulated by Mr. Sinister before, and yeah. So all in all, the Jean Grey that has returned, who is deemed the actual Jean Grey based on her age, not genetics, because Jean and the clone are obviously identical genetically. Jean helps out in the battle, even though she's struggling to gain control over her powers. And she has a battle with the clone on the astral plane. And it's very interesting because it dives into Jean's past and her origin. And that is very accurate as far as the comics go. That was a breath of fresh air. So, all in all, the clone breaks free of um, Mr. Sinister's control. And she and Cyclops work together with the rest of the X-Men to... Ooh, I just glossed over a really awesome part, but I'll get back to that. Uh, she works together to free Baby Nathan. 
and um, I have to mention the fight sequence between Magneto and the Goblin Queen because it involves metal and stained glass, magnetism versus telekinesis, and it's so well done. So well done. It gave me chills. But anyhow, back to the storyline. So... Everybody returns to the mansion, and it turns out that baby Nathan is infected with a techno-organic virus. And the only way to possibly help him is for baby Nathan to travel into Bishop's future, where he could possibly be cured. And this is an entirely different storyline in the comics. Um... And it plays out much differently, as such. Um, but for the sake of this episode, we're continuing on. So, the Gene clone and Cyclops agree that it's best that Nathan travels to the future and hopes of finding a cure for his illness. And so, Cyclops has a rant about being abandoned by his father and he doesn't want that to be the case with his son. Uh, however, Scott was easy to walk out before Nathan could be sent away. Uh, that, to me, was a dick move. Uh, so Nathan is sent to the future with Bishop and... Jean and her clone come together as the clone is leaving to search out her own life and they discuss how they don't know when they were switched and that Jean the original Jean does remember everything um, except that moment. Why? Who knows? Um, but they're not certain who was the Phoenix, who married Scott. There's that discussion and then the clone decides that she has a name and that is Madeline Pryor. So now we have a definition as far as who Madeline Pryor is and and that's pretty much where that ends. Madeline walks off into the distance I think. Does she walk off? I don't think so. It just cuts. And it cuts to Storm sitting in a bar uh, somewhere in Texas um and the bar is called Tequila Mockingbird. <laughs> and um, it's a clever name. Uh, and apparently there are actual places with that name. Uh, thanks to my, my view of um, Beyond the Trailer, uh, where Grace Randolph actually delved into some research and found out that there are several places in the U.S. called Tequila Mockingbird. So that's kind of clever. So Storm encounters Forge, who is a longtime friend of Charles Xavier. And since her depowerment, he has been tracking her, apparently. Stalker much? No. Um... And he thinks that he can restore her powers. And that's where everything leaves off. That's the cliffhanger for episode three. So, to get my feelings on this episode, it's, as I said, it should have at least been a two-parter. And I understand the liberties that the show takes... The original did that as well. 
um, Days of Future Past wasn't 100% comics accurate. The Phoenix and Dark Phoenix sagas weren't 100% comics accurate. But Inferno should have had at least two episodes. At least. So they had to cram all this stuff into one episode. And I, I think that made for a lack of compassion and care for the characters. And especially Jean and Madeline. I've never really come to care about Madeline Pryor so much in the comics. This kind of gave me a little bit more insight to her, so I can appreciate that. Um, the execution of how the clone came to be and leaving it off where they don't know where they've been switched is a huge problem for me. I have an idea of where the switch could have taken place um, beyond good and evil. Um, one of the last great multi-episode um, aspects of the original series. I feel that that would be a good place to say, hey, this is where Jean and Maddie switched out. Um, for them to leave it open to, I don't know when, um, is really a cop out. So has Madeline been Jean for the entire run of the original series up until now? I mean, now we have Jean Grey, the actual Jean Grey, but has she been the actual Jean Grey throughout the series, or, or what? I, I don't like being left in the dark about that. I need a definitive answer, and I think we're owed that. So that is my spoiler review for episode 3 of X-Men 97. Sound off in the comments below about what you think, what your theories are, and I would love to discuss them with you. And I've noticed that there are a lot of people disappointed in this episode. Um, but to take it for what it's worth, or for what it is, I mean, um... Not the strongest of the three so far, but it had some really good moments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when Red and Slim Productions uploads a video. Don't forget to share with your friends. And as always, love and light to you all.